Hi everyone, this is another fun cast and I'm very, very, very happy to have a special guest today. And uh, he is live now with us from Boston and uh, what he's doing there, he will tell us uh, in, a, in a second. Welcome to the fun cast, Jim Anderson. Hi. <laughs> hey Jan, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate being invited to participate. I love your work and um, thank you. you always put, you always have... Um, great content. I'm I'm uh, humbled and okay. happy to include me. Thank you very much. And uh, Jim, please tell us uh, who are you and where are you right now? Because there's a lot of stuff in the background. <laughs> oh, there there is a lot going on. So um, my name is Jim Anderson. I am a partner in Goldbusters Consulting. I'm a certified fundraising executive, and um, I am partners with Alice Ferris, the founder of our firm. Our firm is 15 years old. Um, any of you who have ever watched oh, um, Downton Abbey, if you were in the United States, would know my business partner. She's uh, the on-air host of fundraising and has helped raise over a hundred million dollars uh, for PBS stations nationwide uh, in 17 million households a week. Uh, she and I have been working together just under 10 years and um, we generally try to make it to the Association of Fundraising Professionals Conference. Really excited about it being in Boston. It's been a long time since I've been here. Mm -hmm. And I'm presenting four sessions here while um, we're in Boston. Great. It's an honor for me to be with you live at the conference. My last uh, time was back, uh, yeah. <laughs> was look, there's another interview going another on. Another interview. <laughs> he has a bigger camera than we do, but <laughs> doesn't matter. We focus on the content. Uh, Jimmy, my question also to you. What do you think? What's hot? What's new in digital fundraising in these days in this year? Well, um, one of the sessions that I just delivered this morning um, with my good friend Josh Hirsch, um, we presented on um, making virtual reality a reality for your nonprofit. And it, is, it, it seems to be what is going to be the hot area of technology, the intersection of technology and fundraising for the next year or two. It's going to be pretty intense. There's a lot of money, billions and billions of dollars being spent in that, this uh, sector. Um, there are software companies, there are hardware companies, there are content companies. All of these people are trying to get at the head of this curve because so much video is going to be uh, and photos are going to be uh, virtual. They're either going to be virtual reality um, where you are immersed in that experience or they're augmented reality where there are screens or goggles or glasses where elements of the internet are brought into your world. Um, to, and so both of those, I think, are going to be very, very important. Um, but when you look at things like what Charity Water is doing right now in Ethiopia, they haven't even released their project yet. It'll be out uh, sometime soon. I know I'm on the early email list. Um, but when you look at what they're doing, when you look at what Doctors Without Borders have done, so many international organizations have been taking advantage of this. Um, in fact, I was just reading an article in which the Secretary General of of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, I think it was, uh, was featured experiencing a virtual reality presentation trying to create a greater sense of peace in Israeli and, and Palestinian communities. And in fact, when they did a similar project, and I'm forgetting the name at this moment, but when they did a similar project, they did a fundraiser in Kuwait and drew people to this fundraiser with this virtual reality, and they raised over three billion dollars at that one fundraiser in Kuwait. So I'd say that's a pretty uh, a pretty hot topic, a um, very very interesting area uh, that is going to significantly be impacting um, fundraising around the world. Okay. okay. So and, and, and do you do you know how exactly, for example, Charity Water or Médecins Sans Frontières are using the virtual uh, reality thing? So do they send uh, the lens to the donors? I don't think so because they are very still very expensive, right? Actually, actually, no. The the cost of the glasses have have just dropped. They, there's been so much competition out there that you can get a decent pair of glasses for about $30. Mm -hmm. So it, they're not going to send it in cardboard, Google's cardboard, even cheaper. But they're not going to send this to every donor. But those donors who might have a value in the thousands of dollars, how much does it cost for donor acquisition, retention, stewardship? How much does it cost? So how, how tough would it be to 
to deliver this, these goggles. Or if you were going to uh, do a major event, mm -hmm. you're going to do some major event someplace, have the goggles at the tables and so that you can show this experience. So suppose Charity Water comes back, does something in New York, does something in Zurich, wherever it might be, and they have the goggles there so that people are in the experience. Then they pull the goggles off and it's time to uh, ask if they're ready to support the organization. But so, so some of them are sending out the goggles, but also so many apps are available online or, or for your mobile devices that you can participate in this virtual reality mm -hmm. experience from your phone. It, granted, it's, it's not as cool as if you have it in the goggles because you're not as immersed in the experience, um, but it's still very, very impactful to be able to be in a video the Doctors Without Borders. Their video is is in an Ethiopian village. Mm -hmm. So you walk around and, and you're in this village and you can turn around and look every possible direction. Right. It's not yeah. just 360, it's 360 and 360 <laughs> and 360. It's right. everywhere. It's, Perfect. It's really, lots of different ways people can use it. I see people using it, um, I, I see uh, capacity to use it for things like capital campaigns. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be building a, a new facility or something, take people into the construction yeah, yeah. as it's going on. Just put and them in the glass and... Yeah. Encourage naming rights. Perfect. If you've got a, if you've got an arts organization, you, you talked about giving, you know, you've heard people say you want to give them a front row seat to a mm -hmm. concert. No, no, no. You don't want to give them a front row seat. You want to put them on the stage. <laughs> stage in the concert. Right. And, and experience these type of you know, visceral experiences. Because mm -hmm. um, when I taught, or the presentation that I gave today, I, I brought up the fact that really all we're talking about is, a, is in a heightened level of storytelling. You know, storytelling, the, the typical storytelling thing is who you are, what you do, why it matters, and how people can help. Virtual reality, video, and, and, and photos do all four of those things. Mm -hmm. Who you are, what you do, why it matters, and how somebody can help right there. And I've also said that nobody takes action until they have interest. Nobody has interest until they have awareness. Awareness drives interest, drives action. And that is also what virtual reality can do. It can create awareness, it can generate interest, and it can motivate action. Jim, thank you very much. Another very motivational and inspirational speech and uh, a great insight. And yeah, thank you very much for your thoughts on what's hot, what's you in digital fundraising. And uh, yeah, I wish you a wonderful conference. Enjoy uh, all the people and uh, networking and for sure the speakers. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. I greatly appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thank you very much, Jim. Bye-bye.